Hi, welcome to My Third Life. This is my retirement and music exploration blog. And today I'm going to talk about the most important musical book you can buy. There is a thousand, there's actually, there's, there's tens of thousands of them out there. Uh, you can buy this book on flute technique, you know, Taffigal and Gilbert. You can buy etudes to work on. You can buy more etudes. You can buy more etudes. You can buy a song book of a thousand songs. Uh, I'm looking at the ones I have lying around here. You can buy method books that go through a whole bunch of things. So what's what's the most important book you can buy at pretty much any stage of your development? Well, for me, it's this one. This little black book here. I bought this in Catalina over the weekend. Uh, actually, probably, I think it was Saturday last week. Now, I've had other ones like it, but this is my latest. And what is it? It's a... I call it dreams or W I W W D I W. What do I want? What do I want? So here's, here's the first page. Now this is a music book you create. It's not a music book you buy with everything in it. It's a music book that you have to plug in. What you, what do you want? So I'm working on, keyboards, vocals, flute, and sax. And so this week, I put for a weekly thing, this week I want to, one, get used to my new head joint on flute and work on work on my recording stuff, okay? Second one, write out three new songs to record uh, head and changes. Three, keep hitting the piano and vocals. Now, these aren't very specific what do I want, and that's kind of key. That's a big deal. Four, I work on my blood pressure. <laughs> so that's another thing I want. Anyway, so that was kind of the overall goals. Now, if you have fuzzy, nonspecific goals, you get fuzzy, nonspecific results. So the better. So I've started getting these a little more codified, a little more nailed down. So this is yesterday. I, and I, 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 I headed up, but I was frustrated. If I'm in the middle of something, if I don't like what I'm going, what's going on, or I do like what's going on, I like to notate that. And even if I don't go back and look at it in a week or a year or whatever, somehow it solidifies in my head just writing it down and getting it down on paper. So I put that on my, I want my singing and piano easier. Okay, so that, that's, a, that's a little more specific goal. My flute isn't solid. Sax is question mark tone. Tone's been bothering me on sax. And then what's next? All right. So here I'm saying in my own little music book, okay, you have to define your goals more clearly. If you don't know what you want, how are you going to know when you get what you want so you can move on to the next thing? So what do I want? Okay. So today, Keys, I wanted to be able to play a 1625 on piano in five different keys. Oh, this music book's great. That's exactly what I worked on. And I got that together. So I, I've, I've accomplished something and I'm one step closer to the next thing. Vocals, I was doing I'm Henry the Eighth, I am. And my goal was to nail, to memorize the lyrics, but to nail the vocal quality that I want. It, it's getting better. It's not great but also to nail pitch. So pitch and vocal quality and memorizing a song. Now I have more specific, I'm honing in on more, what is my next step? And that's always the question for anybody, whether you've been playing for five weeks or 50 years, you're always gonna have, what is my next step? And either you have a teacher helping you, and I'm a teacher, or, you have a friend who is very knowledgeable in music, or you have other friends that you're you're kind of going through music with, um, or sometimes you don't even ask that question. You just kind of go aimlessly and hope things work out. So flute, want to really lock in the head joint, ease of motion, sweet, compact tone. Okay, that's not a goal. That's just a, a set of wants, but that is what do I want? Saxophone, tones and lines. So today I did the diminished scale quite a bit because that's a set of that's a series of harmonies I want to be able to add into my sax playing. 
And I also did some Brecker tone copy on sax. All right, so keys, easy comp, we've done that, vocal, uh, never complain, it's tune. Oh, yeah, may make sure everything's in tune. Flute, easy flute tone, blah, blah, blah. So this is important because, and it's really a pain in the butt. I mean, it's hard to go, um, I'll, it's hard to, do, to write anything down before I practice. I'd rather just jump into it. I'd rather pick up the horn and just play. You know, and I have fun and I like doing that. But I think that this is so key because there are specific goals I want to get done. And here's the more important thing. There's levels on music that you have to work toward. And once you've worked toward them and you achieve them, you realize you're in a different world. And this has happened with me on sax. I was working on it's It's like the karate kid wax on wax off. You know, I keep keep waxing the car. Well, I want muscles. Well, keep waxing the car. Well, I want muscles. And then after you've waxed the car for a, a month and a half, you, you go, my God, I have muscles now. So that's kind of the same way with music. You do something and you maintain a plateau for a long time, and then you make the jump. And once you've made the jump, sometimes you're in a place you never even in, uh, envisioned, envisioned or could imagine in your head. And that's happened to me. I've played, 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 and I go, man, I'm, I'm getting tired of this exercise. I'm getting tired of what I'm working on. But I did it, and I got to the level, and then I made the jump, and I go, oh, now I really understand. And it's funny that the more my own musicality and my abilities progress, and I'm 67 and a half and grateful that I can get better on any instrument, on any discipline, it takes work every day, but I can, you know, it's nice to see something get better over time. But as that happens, I hear better and I, I'm hearing music and I go, oh, he's playing that scale or, oh, he's using that effect that I've been working on, that, that inflection or that, that uh, approach note pattern that I've been working on. So that's kind of cool. But anyway, to get back to my original premise, my original thesis, this is the most important book you can ever buy. And it's so key. It's also helpful, and I've done this before. I've got, kind of got out of it. I, I decided to go back to this because I've just finished an EP, extended play, of three songs. I'm happy with them. I've already got the next three in my head that I want to do. But just recording the songs is not good enough. I don't want to just record those songs. I want to play at a higher level, and I want to demonstrate uh, that I progressed in tone, lines, and inflections, and ability to play, period. So to get all that happening, there's little specific steps I have to do, and that's where this book comes in. So when I say I want a better line, what does that really mean? That means nothing, actually. What, what it could mean is I want something that like today, I was working on uh, Mixolydian Bob because I'm playing a blues thing in in my C sharp. And I thought something I want to start adding in is like, here's the tonality. And the song is a song called Wrecking the Rules. Okay, so that's the song. It's a 13 bar blues in E. Well, great. I can play through it now. With blue scale, I can play through it with a halfway decent tone. I can scream some altissimo. But what can't I do? What I'd like to be able to do is start putting diminished in, little little hints of it. So on the on the, the one chord, I'm, uh, I, I'm also going to add more mixed bop. So I'm going to go. diminish to lead to the four chord, but I have to think about it. So what do I want? 
What I want is more interesting lines that start reflecting who I am. So uh, if all my heroes, uh, Sanborn, Brecker, Parker, Grover Washington, uh, Gerald Albright, all these guys, they have some signature things they do that are their style. Well, that's what I'm trying to develop. So that means I've got to figure out what tonality do I, am I comfortable in in my style? And I have a lot of blue scale stuff I can whip off now, but I want to move into other things. So I have the uh, the mixed linear bop I'm working on. I have the diminished approaches I'm working on. I have lines uh, with mixed bop a little more intricate that I'm working on. So these are all next steps to lead to my next recording. But this is the most important book. This keeps me centered. Because without, for me, without an anchor or a center, I float. So, hey, today let's let's put on some song on YouTube and blow with that for a while. Hey, that's great. All right, let's do this. Because here's the deal. For a lot of the people I know that are in the rock and, uh, the rock and dance world, to be a better player means they know more songs. So they take their same skill level and they apply it to another 20 songs they've memorized. That's fine. But from a jazz perspective, to play better means that I take a song I've played maybe five years and I play it with a higher level. I play it with better tone. I play it with better time. I play it with inflections. I play it with style that sounds like who I am at this point in my career. I play it showing a knowledge of developing a line and developing a solo coming up and coming down. So these are all, all attributes. They're all things I can do, and I want to do them to a higher level and then reflect that in my recording. So that is better. So better means different things to different people, and, and it's a good idea for you as a musician to qualify for yourself, what does better mean? And I even have, I think, a video on that. If you don't know what better is, then you need to figure that out. And for me, better time, better tone, better inflections, more ability to bring in other tonalities. Like I was doing a thing this morning where I'm approaching the four chord by a half step, a tritone substitution. So I'm going on the one chord. <laughs> So I approach the F sharp chord by G. So I'm going, here's my C sharp. So to approach the F sharp chord, I go G, I do a G7 chord. And then I and then I resolve it by going to the F sharp chord. So these are things that these are, and, and anything that I want to have in my playing has to be way over in grain. Like when, when you had breakfast this morning, did you say, I'll take my fork and I'll take my, my spoon and grab it. Then I'll put it in the cereal. Then I'll take it out. Then I'll put it in my mouth. Then I'll chew. All of these things were completely automatic and required no thought on your side at all and that's what my playing has to be like for me i want it so well ingrained that when i'm in a, a, st a stress situation with a different band or if i'm playing uh, tired or if i'm playing a song i'm not quite familiar with i want all of these abilities to be inherent and easy and that's the goal for me so once again i hope you buy my book all you have to do is buy a blank book and start putting in it. What do I want? That's always the best question you can ask yourself. And the more specific your answer is, the better your results are going to be. What do I want? Better time. Okay, how do I get better time? Oh, I play with a metronome. Well, how do I play with a metronome? Oh, I take it slow and really lock in a quarter note. Okay, well, I could do that. How do I do it better? Uh, move the metronome marking up. Well, how do I get a better sense of time? Subdivide the beat. So instead of quarter notes, I start thinking eight. So that's good. How do I do that better? Okay, I put triplet subdivisions in. How do I do that better? Oh, sixteenths. But it has to start with the desire in the first place to get better at that specific skill. And the more specific your goals, fuzzy goals or fuzzy results, specific, 
Measurable goals give you specific measurable progress. And here's the best part of this book. You pick it up six months from now, frustrated going, I'm not getting anywhere. And then you look at the things you were working at, say, two months ago, three months ago, and you say, I can do that now. I, I mean, I'm better at that. So, so I guess even though I'm not happy, I'm still better than where I was and I'm making progress. And that's all you can ever expect. You know, we all have our dreams of what we want to do, where we want to end up. But the bottom line is, if you can show progress from time to time to time, that's always the best end result. All right. Be well, guys. Take care.